Hey guys, welcome back to 5 in 5 where I answer 5 health and fitness questions in 5 minutes and today's topic is going to be training and this is going to be part 1 of our series. So the first question I want to cover is what should you do first, isolation or compound movements? Now let's just clear something up, an isolation movement is something for example like a bicep curl or a tricep press or even a pec flight, you know, the list goes on. A compound movement is where you're using more than one muscle group at the same time. So it's a multi-joint movement um, utilizing multiple muscle groups. Now the answer here is 110% compound movements before isolation every time because the aim should be to progressive overload, progressively overload over time. And if you're performing isolation exercises at the start of a session, then as the session goes on, if you go on to compound lifts, you're gonna to be too fatigued to get the most out of that exercise. So while you're fresh, do your big lifts, focus on getting stronger each week using more than one muscle group to lift more weight more load over time and move on to your isolation at the end of the session. Second question is to do with cardio. Should you do your cardio before or after training? You should always do your cardio either after training or separate to your strength training altogether. The reason for this is similar to the first question. If you're doing cardio before your weights, then you're not going to get the most out of your weight session because you're already going to be fatigued, okay? You're not going to be able to lift as heavy, you're not going to be able to lift with as good a form, and you're probably going to miss out on your reps. So while your energy is there, while you're still fresh, you should be putting all of your effort into your strength training before your cardio. Um, if you like to do cardio at the end of strength training, then that's fine. Um, otherwise, I would also recommend doing it completely separate. So you may do car strength training at the start of the day, and then cardio in the second half of the day or a couple hours later um, or even on a separate day altogether which is also a good option but I would definitely not recommend doing cardio before strength training especially if you're talking about high intensity interval training for your cardio because you're going to be completely zapped before you even get to the weights. The third question is is supersets or are supersets beneficial for muscle growth and fat loss? Now if we're talking about supersets at the end of a session, then I think they can be an extremely great way to increase the intensity um, of your workout and really finish off the muscle groups that you're working. Um, and just generally, it's a really good finisher. But if we're talking about productivity and supersetting throughout the session, then it is not a good idea to be supersetting the same muscle group or the same muscle groups that are do doing the similar movement. So let's say, for example, you're supersetting incline bench press and flat bench dumbbell press not a great idea because you're going to fatigue the chest that quickly that your overall numbers for the session and your effort level, your performance is going to drop very quickly. Uh, or even if something like chest and triceps superset because you're using your triceps when you do chest. Okay, so you're going to fatigue too quick, your performance is going to drop off and you're not going to get as much out of the session as what you could or what you probably should. Now, Supersetting opposing muscle groups, so agonists and antagonists, let's say for example chest and back I think is a fantastic idea especially if you're short on time because you're not going to be over fatiguing that muscle group but you're going to get a lot done in a short period of time. Even things like doing straight sets but switching muscle groups, so you might go from bench press have a 45 to 60 second rest and go to pull ups, have a 45 to 60 second rest go back to bench press until you've done your sets. You're gonna, you're gonna get more done in a shorter period of time. You don't need to rest as long. Well, it's not, you're not gonna be resting and sitting around doing nothing as long as what you would be if you were resting for two or three minutes between bench press and then going to the, um, the pull-ups once you've done all your sets. So to answer the question, supersets can be fantastic for muscle growth if you are short on time. Um, for fat loss, they can be great at the end of a session to increase the intensity and get more done in a, uh, in a short period of time. The fourth question, sorry, what do I think is the best exercise for legs? Now, this varies from person to person. In my opinion, squats and deadlifts are the best exercise for legs. But if you're someone that gets back pain when you squat or when you deadlift, or if you're someone that just biomechanically doesn't suit squats, or you just don't enjoy them, because you know the number one rule for a training is you need to enjoy what you're doing. If you just don't enjoy them and you'd rather do leg press or you get more done, or you enjoy leg press more, then that's fine. Then leg press is the best exercise for you. A lot of people say that the king of leg exercises is squats, and you know to a degree that's true, but if you don't enjoy it and you can't do them properly, then it's not. Find an exercise where you're gonna be able to progress over time, and that is gonna be you know, your exercise. That's gonna be the king of leg exercises for you. 
The fifth question today is how often should you train abs? Now, when I started out, I was training abs pretty much every single day. I was doing a lot of reps, um, a lot of ab workouts, thinking that the more I did, the better my abs would look. But you've got to understand that abs are just like any other muscle group. Although, although they are a smaller muscle group, similar to calves, they can be trained a little more frequently than something such as lats or legs um, or, or chest, something like that. You still don't need to be training abs every single day. My recommendation is two to three times per week. Train them like any other muscle group. Overload them with weight. Um, train them with hitting different angles, so lower abs, upper abs, obliques, um, you know, transverse abdominis, all that type of stuff. Although you can't completely isolate the abs to switch everything else off and just use your lower abs, you can target certain areas to work harder than others. Um, so hitting them from all angles, different rep ranges, different loads, and you know, working those rep ranges between six and 12 or six and 15 reps if you want to develop your abs, because you've got to remember, even when you get lean, if you don't have muscular development around your abs, they're not gonna look great. But if you do have that muscular development, then you'll be able to see your abs with a higher body fat percentage. And once you do get leaner, they will look a lot better. So to answer the question, I think the most beneficial amount of times to train abs throughout the week directly is two to three times per week. Keep in mind that you're gonna be targeting your abs with movements such as deadlifts, squats, overhead presses, pull-ups, basically any compound movement, and most movements you do in the gym, apart from isolation, even then, some of them you are using a lot of core. So this has been today's episode, five in five, five health and fitness questions that I get asked frequently, and um, you know the most common questions that I get asked today on training, which is part one. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, um, and I look forward to bringing you part two of nutrition next week.